In this quick video, I'm going to be working on an SLH F1000, but this applies to all the models that use this type of power supply. Very common problem. Let's check it out. Note, when I press the power button, the clock display lights up. The time display lights up, you see, but the power light does not come on. And there's the problem. The regulator has failed. This is a quick way to tell. If the power light doesn't turn on, but the time display does, the machine... The system control thinks the machine is on, but there's no power coming out of the regulator because the regulator has failed. The part that's failed is the good old STK5441. Got the top off the machine. First thing we notice on here is this one's got a different drum. This is an SLHF1000. It has a rotary transformer on top for the flying erase heads. It's a forehead machine plus two heads for flying erase for editing because this one here, accurate editing down to a couple frames. Anyway, i uh, got the top off the machine. I'll show you guys where the regulator is and we're going to get in there and change that out. The regulator is right there. It's in behind that metal cover. It's bolted to the heat sink. And this one's been replaced before. I changed this out when the machine was only a few years old and it died again. And I'm putting a used one in that I stole out of another machine that is a parts wrecker because these parts are very difficult to try to find these days. Uh, easiest way to change these, we're gonna remove that cover and remove the actual heat sink with the regulator on it. And uh, then it'll lift out and we can unsolder it and put the new one in. First things first, I need to remove the bracket that holds the IC up against the heat sink. That piece has to come out first, and then we can lift out the circuit board with the remaining heat sink on it and uh, unsolder the part and replace it. Now the entire power supply will lift out. Then I can access the bottom of the board to actually remove the IC. I also have to remove the circuit board from the bracket so we can lift the heat sink with the IC attached away from the bracket. Like the circuit board has to be lifted away. Right now it's attached to the same bracket that the transformer's on. So there's a couple more screws I got to remove. And then once they're removed, I can now separate the board from the chassis to access the bottom of the uh, IC to unsolder it. It's a fair bit of work to change up on these ones. Some of the beta machines were real easy. You could get to it without anything, but these ones here, a little bit more disassembly required to service the regulator on these ones. Once the IC has been unsoldered, we can remove the entire heat sink with the IC for easy replacement. The new IC is installed into the board. Okay, you got the new IC mounted. We'll just tack it in and then we can clamp it back in place and put some heat, heat sink compound on. Let's get some solder on here to hold it in place. So we'll just get the good old heat sink compound. Mix it up a bit here. And we'll just put a nice even coat. On the back of the heat sink. And now we can just remount the heat sink. I have to put the bracket in front of it here to squeeze it together. Look 
thirsty. where the magnetic screwdrivers come to an advantage so you can seat things like this and the bracket top goes back in place and any luck the screws will just screw right into it like that torque it down and now I have to remount the board. Nice thing about these Sony, especially the beta machines, they were really well built for servicing. You know, some brands of equipment, I know I've bitched about this in the past, some equipment was just built like crap as far as serviceability goes. Um, you can always tell well built equipment because it's designed to be maintained. It really, it really makes your life easy as a servicer when you can just do stuff like that and everything just comes apart and everything just goes back together really easy now you notice when I press the power button we heard the relay click we also see the display lights up the super beta lights up beta hi-fi the uh, the actual display lights up and the power light lights up and we can load a tape and the tape will go in okay our little switch is giving us trouble we'll have to deal with that the cassette in switch is uh giving it's still giving trouble on this machine actually but uh this the switch is not activating we'll have to deal with that so what we're gonna have to do is i'm gonna take the front load and make some part we got the power working on it now so we're part way there i'm going to have to uh, there's a couple of little switches in here that give us trouble. Little leaf switch that detects when the tape is pushed in. I can probably trick it into thinking the tape's gone in. See if it will see if it will take the tape by just shorting these two pins together like that. Okay, it's a, as you can see it's just a little switch that's on this plug. There's a little there's a little leaf switch. I'll show you where it is. There, there's a little switch. It's on the end of this wire. When you push the tape in it makes a connection to tell it that you've pushed the tape in and what happens is the contacts get dirty and when the contacts get dirty it doesn't signal the machine so what I did to force the tape to go in is here's a connector that it goes to here I just shorted the two pins here that are the, the plug here these two end pins short those together thinks the tape's gone in let's see if it plays now this machine has not been turned on in many many years i wouldn't be surprised if the heads are all contaminated and stuff on this thing but we'll see whether we've got anything on here or not we'll go back and we'll eject the tape here and we'll see how it ejects okay just gonna clean the heads on this thing we'll try it and see if it's any better as usual we'll use the paper the, the clean the paper to clean the heads like I always do it's the safest way to clean your video heads you certainly don't want to be sticking a q-tip or anything in here on the video heads and we'll just turn the drum and we'll use a q-tip to clean the control track linear audio and erase heads full track erase head so on a beta machine the audio head is down here bottom portion of its control track 
top side of it is the audio head and the audio erase head is next to it. Full erase head is on the back side of the drum here. Pinch roller. A little bit of dirt on here. Well, I found another tape here, and I'm going to play this for a minute here. Um, this is a little bit of history, American history. Anybody, if I mention the date that this was recorded, and this was just a, a, a newscast, but uh, October 17th, 1989 was when this was recorded. Uh, the event happened about just after 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, a lot of people may, well... If you're old enough, you'll remember this. If you're young enough, you won't remember it. I'll just let this play out as it goes here. So you'll probably remember this. The top story of the double-decker roadway crumbled, as this eyewitness explained last night. We were about 20 cars away from the incident, and we thought the well, limousine was uh, on flat and started shaking from side to side. And then all of a sudden, I realized that it was an earthquake. And I didn't realize it was so close to the collapsing of the bridge. And all of a sudden, we saw that the bridge had collapsed right before us. And we were very nervous, but uh, Jonathan Craig... Now, that's the feed that was like that. The tape isn't like that. That was the actual broadcast. I guess this was done with home video. They immediately went over to the car. You see right there, they started um, videotaping. Two cars fell into this uh, bridge, and they almost... So this machine is working perfect. This is a tape, again, this was recorded in 1989. And it was kind of unbelievable, we couldn't believe he was doing it. I mean, he actually pulled all these people. You can see that this machine is working, and um, we gotta keep these machines restored. Gotta keep them running because still lots of old tapes out there that need to be transferred over. We'll catch you in the next one, and I hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you soon when we do the front loading mechanism. Bye for now.